Nissan Altima debuted in 1992. It's 24 years old and now in its fifth generation, which started in 2013. It's also been slightly tweaked for this year. So, will I be impressed? Let's find out. Well, these days it can be pretty hard to tell cars apart, especially mid-sized sedans. But thankfully, there's a nice big Nissan emblem up front to tell you exactly what you're looking at. The revised shape is sleek and modern, and it does look fresher now. Form definitely follows function, but thankfully, the alloy wheels make it pop a bit. Sure, it's an aesthetically pleasing and modern shape, but I think the Altima stands out more when you get behind the wheel. More on that later. I also find that the interior stands out in a good way. I like the light tones in the interior, especially this wood grain here. I think it looks great with the light seats. And of course, I like the fact that they are all power with lumbar support too. But the light color and the wide stance of these seats, very similar to what you see in Infinities as well, is very comfortable. And just overall, the light tones are matched up to the dark here and it follows across on the dash. And I really like the look. It's just very neutral and very appealing to me. You even get a soft touch dash cover here. So nice job, Nissan. In the center here, you have the armrest that's covered in leather, and there's actually two ways to open it. Open it right here, and you have this tray right here, which can come up or down, and then go ahead and close it, and open it from this side, and you get to the deeper storage, and also the charger. Moving forward, you have controls for your heated seats, two cup holders, and the CVT transmission, which does have a sport mode too. Up front here, you get another charger and a USB input, plus another aux input for your stereo. I find the infotainment and the ventilation controls intuitive and very easy to use. Just click it on here, and you get dual zone climate control, which is definitely a nice luxury feature. The infotainment screen is, to me, very easy to navigate, and you can easily pull up your navigation or go to your apps, and when you do that, you can see that there's traffic information, travel link, voice commands, and you can really hook it up to your phone and control a lot of it through your phone as well, which is really nice. Go ahead into your apps and you can see there's a couple apps here and of course you can add more too. I'm definitely a big fan of push button starts and this one has it. The only thing is you do have to press it on the outside to go ahead and open the doors and press it twice to open the other side. In some other cars, it just recognizes that you're there and you can just go ahead and open it as long as you have the key in the pocket. So, one extra step here, but it definitely ensures safety. You get a light tune for the steering wheel too, which I think looks great. Over here, you can control the radio, channel, and volume. And then on this side, it's the smart cruise control and Bluetooth as well. The gauges are very simple and straightforward. Large tachometer over here, speedometer with fuel gauge over here. And in the center, some information, which you choose right here, and scroll through. And there you go. Just to the left of the steering wheel above here, you have controls for the lights and then a trip odometer reset. You also have the button to pop the trunk below, traction control cancel, which I never recommend you touch, and the heated steering wheel button. Below that is where you pop the hood and the gas cap. On the door, I kind of miss a place to rest my phone, but that does serve as an armrest. You have controls for your power windows and door locks here, mirrors here, and cup holder and more storage down there. All in all, it's a comfortable, classy, and luxurious interior that I think is quite stylish too. Out back on the door, you do get a nice place to store your phone here if you like. Controls for the window, cup holder and storage down there magazine rack, your own ventilation, and seating for three across. You also get two more cup holders in the armrest. Pop the trunk and it reveals very, very deep storage. Excellent. You also get convenient straps to fold down the rear seats if you want more room. Powering the Nissan Altima 2.5 is a 2.5 liter 4-cylinder made it to a CVT transmission 
It produces 182 horsepower and 180 pound-feet of torque. Zero to 60 takes seven and a half seconds. Fuel economy is rated at 27 miles per gallon in the city and 39 miles per gallon on the highway. You can expect 31 miles per gallon overall. The Nissan Altima 2.5 SL starts out at $28,570. Now, you may want to add the tech package, which is $1,700 and includes forward collision warning, emergency braking, intelligent cruise control, Nissan Connect navigation mobile apps and services, 7-inch touchscreen, voice recognition for nav and audio, Sirius XM travel link, auto collision notification, remote start via smartphone, emergency call, stolen vehicle locator, dealer service scheduling and maintenance alerts. There's an $800 moonroof, $200 carpeted floor and trunk mats. Now with all that, you're actually out the dealer door with destination at $32,115. Now of course, there's a lot of competition in the mid-size sedan market from the likes of the Honda Accord, the Toyota Camry, Hyundai Sonata, both domestic and foreign, everybody's making a mid-size sedan. So, what makes this Nissan Altima stand out? Well, I think it's just the general look of the interior to me. I really like it. And check this out. It's really quick for a four cylinder. Off the line, it feels like a six cylinder. And I don't think you're suffering very much when you get behind the wheel of this four cylinder equipped Altima. It's got the CVT transmission, which is very smart and always seems to be ready for you if you need that speed to merge or pass or get out of an emergency situation. My uncle actually has an older version with the V6 and this one actually feels just as quick with the four cylinder. And as I was alluding to earlier, I really like the way the technology is integrated. It's very easy to get to anything you want to get to. If you want to go ahead and adjust the steering wheel, if you want to go ahead and program your favorite XM channels, if you want to program the navigation, use the ventilation system, all very easy to use. And therefore, in my Drive and Ivan technology integration score, I'll give it a very solid 9 out of 10. Nice job, Nissan. So what's new for 2016 in this Altima? Well, of course, the styling that I talked about earlier, it looks fresher, and therefore it's very new on the outside, and that's a good thing. It also has a lot of standard safety features, and the safety features in this Altima are really top-notch. You've got those blind spot warning lights on the outside mirrors. You also have that excellent active cruise control, and basically, you can set it and forget it. It slows you down if cars in front of you slow down. It even stops, and that is just an incredible safety feature. So this Nissan Altima is very safe, which is a good thing. And it's also available in a sport model for this year, the SL. If you want more performance, you can get that V6 and more sportiness out of it, where you can actually shift it yourself with paddles too. Although it's quite peppy in normal drive mode, switch it into the sport mode and it takes on a different personality. It's more rev happy, it holds the gears longer and uh, handling is, you know, predictable for a front wheel drive front engine car, which means understeer basically, but that's safe and that's the way it should be. It's not a boring car to take to the twisties because it's actually pretty peppy and handles pretty well and sounds good too. And there you see someone's in my blind spot and this Altima is looking out for me. And also, I've got the cruise control set to 65 miles an hour and I'm not going anywhere near that. I'm going like 56. Why? Because traffic's not moving that fast. But if traffic were to speed up, it'll speed me up. If this truck suddenly slams on its brakes, then the Altima will slam on its brakes for me. It's always looking out. Great safety features here. And checking out the night look of the Altima. And I like it. Not too much red. A little bit on the steering wheel there and uh, surrounding the infotainment screen. But it actually works in this Altima. Nice. Well then, 
what do I think of the Nissan Altima after living with it for a week? Well, like I said, I really like the interior. I think it looks great and it's very easy to use all the things you want to do. It's also great to have that integrated safety and to be able to program it and do things with your apps. You can even start it. That's really nice. And that adaptive cruise control is a feature that I think everyone should have. It's absolutely incredible. So this Nissan Altima faces the competition and it's actually quite peppy, even in the four cylinder format. And I think that says a lot about Nissan's engineering. There's a little bit of the Z car in this Nissan Altima and I've enjoyed driving it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to me on YouTube. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm driving Ivan.